The point of this video is to help illustrate the concept of the first and second derivative test that was covered in Calculus AB. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to do basic derivative. When applying the power rule, you're going to want to bring down the original exponent in front of the variable and then subtract one from the original exponent. Here are some examples to show the power rule being used. There are other derivative rules out there, but this is all we'll need to know to have an understanding of the first derivative test. So you use the first derivative test if you want to find when the function is increasing or decreasing. Also, you want to use the first derivative test if you want to find the critical points of the function. For a function to be either increasing or decreasing, it must follow these rules. 1. A function f is increasing on an interval for any two numbers, x1 and x2, in the interval. x1 is less than x2 implies f of x, x of 1 is less than f of x of 2. 2. A function f is decreasing on an interval if for any two numbers, x of 1 and x of 2 in the interval, x of 1 is greater than x of 2 implies f of x of 1 is greater than f of x of 2. Now let's draw a graph to illustrate what increasing, decreasing, and constant looks like. For the first portion, we can see that it has a negative slope, therefore it is decreasing. For the second portion of the graph, it has a constant slope, therefore we can identify it as constant. For the third portion, it has a positive slope, therefore it is increasing. Also, the first derivative test allows you to find critical points of the function. Critical points are values of the function where the derivative equals zero, or a place where the function is constant for a brief period. This is helpful because it will allow us to find intervals of the function that are increasing and decreasing. We're going to look at an example to illustrate this process. The example problem that we're going to be looking at is f of x equals x cubed minus 3 halves x squared. With this function, we're going to try to find the intervals of which it is increasing and also where it is decreasing. So the first step we're going to try to do is take the derivative of the function. What I'm going to do here is separate it into x cubed and negative 3 halves x squared. This way we could apply the same concept we talked about earlier in the video. So x cubed will turn into 3x squared and negative 3 halves x squared will turn into negative 6 halves x. So we put them together and we get the f prime of the original function which is 3x squared minus 3x. Now that we found the derivative of the original function, we have to set that equal to zero. Then we simplify that as much as we can, and in this example, we would set the 3x equal to zero, and then the x minus one equal to zero. After that, we would have to solve for x for both of the equations, and those would be the critical points of the original function. Now that we found the critical values for our function, which is 0 and 1, we can figure out when the function is increasing or decreasing. And since the problem that we're doing didn't mention a set interval, we're just going to go from negative infinity to infinity. Therefore, the intervals that we're going to have is negative infinity to 0, 0 to 1, and then 1 to infinity. 
infinity. We got these intervals by making the first one from negative infinity to our lowest critical number, which is zero. And then our next interval is between the two critical numbers that we got. And then the last interval is from the highest critical number to positive infinity. After we find all of our intervals, we have to pick a number in between them to test the side of our derivative. For example, in the interval negative infinity to zero, we can pick negative one since it falls inside of the interval. For the second interval, we'll pick one half, and then for the third interval, we're going to pick two. After that, we plug those numbers into the derivative function and see if that comes out to be positive or negative. If the result is negative, then the function is decreasing, and if the result is positive, then the function is increasing. After doing all the math and plugging in the test numbers, we get the first interval to be positive, the second to be negative, and then the third interval to be positive. So now we know that the original function is increasing on the intervals negative infinity to zero and one to infinity, and then is decreasing from zero to one. We can also show this by graphing the derivative of the function. Another thing about the first derivative test is that we can find relative minimums and relative maximums. A relative maximum can be found if the derivative of the function goes from increasing to decreasing, and then a relative minimum can be found if the derivative of the function goes from decreasing to increasing. So now we know that the critical point 0 is the relative maximum, while the critical point 1 was a relative minimum. Here is what we can conclude from the first derivative test. To find the coordinates of the relative max and the relative min, all we have to do is plug the x values into the original function. This concludes the first derivative test. Now that we are done with the first derivative test, we can move on to the second derivative test. This test follows a similar procedure as the first derivative test, but the second derivative test allows us to find the concavity of the function along with the inflection points of the function. The official definition of concavity is, let f be differentiable on an open interval i. The graph of f is concave upward on i if f prime is increasing on the interval and concave downward on i if f prime is decreasing on the interval. Here's a graph on how their slope relates to their concavity. One last thing to understand about the second derivative test is points of inflection. Points of inflection are very similar to critical points because they are the points where the second derivative equals zero. However, points of inflection can also mean it is undefined at that point. They are also very similar to critical points because we're going to be using the same process to find intervals to test for concavity. This might seem kind of confusing right now, but we're going to do a practice problem to help understand this a little better. So for the example problem, we're going to find the intervals of where f of x is concave up and concave down. So for our example, we're going to be using the same function as we did earlier for the first derivative test. 
which is x cubed minus 3 over 2x squared. The first derivative is 3x squared minus 3x, and so the second derivative would be 6x minus 3. This time we're going to set the second derivative equal to 0, and we're going to find the x values by splitting up the two parts 3 and 2x minus 1. Since we don't have a set interval again, we're going to go from negative infinity to infinity. And since now we have our point of inflection, which is 1 half, our first interval is going to be from negative infinity to 1 half, and then our last interval is going to be from 1 half to infinity. This is where we're going to have to start plugging numbers from inside of the intervals inside of the second derivative to find if the interval is positive or negative. As you can see, the first interval turned out to be negative and the second interval turned out to be positive, which means negative infinity to one half is concave down and one half to infinity is concave up. Just like in the first derivative test, we can also draw a graph of the second derivative showing the concavity. And that's the end of the second derivative test. Next, we're going to be piecing the first and second derivative test together, and we're just going to show a quick example of that. For example, we're going to be using x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, and the derivative of that would be 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Then we set that equal to zero to find the critical values by splitting up the 4x squared and the x minus three to find the x values. In this example, we're gonna have three intervals from negative infinity to zero, zero to three, and from three to infinity. Next, we're gonna plug in numbers from each interval into the derivative of the function to see whether each interval is increasing or decreasing. As you can see, the first interval is negative, the second interval is negative, and the third interval is positive. And when it goes from negative to positive, it means that there is a relative minimum. So now we're done with the first derivative test and we're going to move on to the second derivative test where we first have to find the points of inflection. Using our points of inflection, we now have an interval from negative infinity to zero, zero to two, and two to infinity. Now we just have to plug in numbers from inside of the intervals into the second derivative and figure out whether the interval is concave up or concave down. As you can see, the interval negative infinity to zero and two to infinity are both concave up and then from zero to two is concave down. Here's a graph of the function both increasing and decreasing and where they are concave up and concave down. This concludes the video of the first and second derivative test.